If you guys have not tried yerba mates, those that know me know that they are my favorite thing ever. No joke, obviously not sponsored. I'm nobody, but I uh, definitely recommend them. I don't do well with coffee. I'm already a crazy energetic person and these hit just right. So I highly recommend them. Yeah, anyways. It's Madison Harnish back in my blue kitchen for another crazy video and today I wanted to touch on a topic that's very close to my heart. If you guys didn't know, I am a military spouse, I guess. My husband, he's in the army. Um, <laughs> and today I wanted to talk about how MLMs target military spouses and why MLMs are such a huge thing in the military spouse community. Those who are military spouses probably know this. MLMs are rampant in military spouse communities and lots of military bases. They're just everywhere. And I wanted to touch on why that is and maybe what we can do to help prevent that from happening. If you enjoy deep dives into businesses and unethical business practices, definitely subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you have a story to share on a time that you've dealt with a scam or an unethical business practice, definitely click my website down below and click on share your story to share your story. And well, let's get into the video. According to data from the White House and the Department of Defense, there are nearly 690,000 spouses of active duty military members. The unemployment rate for military spouses over the past decade has hovered around 20 to 25 percent which is four times the amount of the average adult woman. That means 138,000 to 175,000 military spouses are currently unemployed. According to the Department of Defense, more than half of military spouses have moved more than three times throughout their spouse's military career. And military bases are usually placed more than 50 miles from any major cities, which means that there's usually slim pickings for jobs available in that area. I currently can relate to that. I'm in upstate New York right now where there is not a lot going on. The closest city is a good hour and a half away. And because there's so many military spouses, there's a lot of job competition for jobs that normally would not be seen as that valuable or that highly sought after. To read off a quote, a military spouse and former pharmaceutical rep says, it's really challenging to run a career when you don't know how long you're going to be in one area or you're discriminated against if you're not there long. And I can totally relate to this. I've definitely dealt with a challenging job market in the area that we currently live. And it's this bizarre feeling of knowing that this place that you're in right now isn't really your home. You're going to move pretty soon. We're planning to move to Colorado Springs very soon here. And when you go to apply to jobs, since they know that you're military, a lot of times they'll ask, do you know if you're moving soon? How long are you gonna be here? Things like that, because they don't wanna hire you if you're gonna leave sometime soon. So a lot of times it's very challenging for military spouses to find a job, not only that they like, but that gives them the income that they deserve. Luckily, I was able to find a job that I really, really loved working at a military surplus store. And a lot of my coworkers, though it was kind of a base level pay job, were college graduates and they were all military spouses and i found that so odd over here they're supporting their husband in their military career but they're just not able to find a job that supports them and their education and their true ability there's just so much job competition it can also be really challenging to make friends and form relationships because people are constantly leaving and moving around since a lot of people in the military are moving from place to place if you know that you're leaving soon it can be hard to stick your roots in somewhere knowing that you're just gonna leave and have to start over again in you know a few months on top of this if you have kids military daycare centers can get filled really quickly 
or you still have to pay a pretty hefty amount for daycare services. So not only is it challenging to find a job that matches your qualifications, but it's also very challenging to find childcare. So these two together makes it really, really tough for military spouses, especially those who have children, to justify working a job and paying for childcare when they're probably saving more by not having to put their child in childcare in the first place. All of this combined with the feeling of wanting to make new friends and new connections leads to the perfect MLM breeding ground. Literally every MLM has a giant foot in the military spouse community and it's upsetting to me as a military spouse and something that definitely needs to be talked about more and the awareness needs to be spread throughout military spouse communities. My personal opinion too is a lot of military spouse members are younger than the average married woman. I would say personally that might just be my personal opinion but something I've noticed is a lot of military spouse members are younger, they're kind of just starting their lives, just figuring stuff out which as we know, younger people are the perfect target for MLMs as well because they're a little bit more naive and well-assuming and are just more likely to get excited about the potential of an MLM without being skeptical about it. I've heard so many stories of younger military spouses who look up to the older military spouses in their community as these like very wise leader type of women and a lot of those older women are in these MLMs and will kind of prey on the younger military spouses who don't know any better and who want to trust them and get them into their MLM. Other than that, since a lot of military spouses will be new to an area or wanting to make friends, these MLM distributors within the military spouse community will throw parties or create these fake groups or participate in groups, making these spouses feel welcome and a part of something that they wouldn't necessarily normally feel since they're in a new area and they're kind of out of their element, struggling to find a job, struggling to make friends, and don't really know many people. They promise a certain level of income and community that military spouses find it very hard to find on their own. So MLMs are exploiting all of the vulnerabilities in the military spouse community. I personally feel like government agencies who are aware of all these issues, as you saw the Department of Defense has clearly stated, the unemployment rates of military spouses, a lot of these government agencies aren't doing much to change that or help that. Even I, when I couldn't find a job for a little while, got so desperate to find a job that I ended up going to a military spouse employment center on base. I personally felt like this military spouse employment center was not helpful at all. They wrote down my email, asked what type of jobs I'm looking for, and then provided me basically Indeed ads that I could find easily on my own of certain jobs that are available in the area. It was not helpful at all. I didn't feel like I was being supported by them and I kind of felt alone on my quest to find a job and find the right fit in this very strange place that I was still learning about. The fault in those systems and the flaws in those systems have allowed MLMs to flourish within military spouse communities. With military spouses left out to dry with no help from their community, they are made more vulnerable to these predatory MLMs. To highlight this, I wanted to read a story sent to me by a subscriber. They created their own blog post about this issue as well, so I'll be linking that down below if you wanna read the full story and check that out. So she starts the article by saying, when your spouse is in the military, your abode is where the military posts you. This can be a very exciting and interesting life, but can also be very difficult for a spouse trying to have a non-military career. When my husband was full-time in the Navy, most of the spouses complained about the inability to use their college education to create a career. The spouses could usually find a job, but moving every few years meant a career with promotions and salary increases was all that was possible. I want to be very clear, this article about MLM and the military is from the perspective of an officer's wife. Too often I hear that people fall for MLM scams are dumb and uneducated. The military wives I met in officers' housing all had college degrees. 
A few even had advanced degrees. These women were anything but dumb. But why would they fall for an MLM, where few even make a profit and many lose money? And this is something that I completely can relate to because I've noticed there's so many military spouses who have college degrees who struggle to find a legitimate job on these small towns near military bases. MLM and military life go hand in hand. The MLM company, an example would be Tupperware or LuLaRoe, offer a job that moves with the spouse. These companies now sell online. Facebook was at one time overrun with LuLaRoe groups, but also do direct sales via parties. The promise of be your own boss and your success depends on how hard you work can appeal to a military spouse looking for a way to financially be successful. This woman is a Navy wife, so she her husband is in the Navy. She describes her experience with Tupperware, which is you know the traditional experience with Tupperware. But the main thing that I want to touch on was when she goes into more about the connection between the different military wives and how that all works. And that's something that I really want to share. The Navy knew without the families supporting each other, keeping families in the Navy was going to be more difficult. And that's one thing I do have to say from my personal experience. Uh, it seems like the military really values family and supports it a lot. And, you know, there's definitely a lot of great things about being involved with the military or having a spouse in the military. Um, so I don't want to make this a complete hate video on military spouses. This is just spreading awareness about MLMs within the military spouse community. Instead of friendships and support, the Navy housing became one big MLM party after party. I would attend as frankly it was lonely with my husband gone for months at a time and often purchase just the smallest item. It was taboo to attend a party and not purchase anything. It seems like it's like a social code where if you attend a party you have to purchase something and if you're invited to a party you have to attend it. It's the polite thing to do since these communities aren't like a big town. It's a very small knit community where everyone kind of knows everyone. So there's a lot more social pressure. And combined with that, oftentimes women are kind of by themselves. That's something I forgot to mention earlier. But when she says that her husband was gone for months at a time, I've seen a lot of women who have children whose husband goes out on deployment and they're retrospectively a single mom for nine months and they have to provide for their kids which of course their husband is helping with but they also have to single parent their kids while their spouse is gone that can lead to a very lonely and isolating experience so being invited to a party if you're so lonely even if it is an MLM party you're almost so desperate for that social interaction that you'll attend anything and that's another way that these predatory MLMs prey on the vulnerabilities of military spouses. When I was first married, Navy spouses had movie nights and going out for pizza night. We had bowling parties and children's birthday parties. We did fundraisers for Navy relief and held each other's hands when the deployments seemed too long. Once MLM companies found the Navy spouses, it became one long party and bring your credit card or checkbook. Those that did not sell anything were caught with not making any money and just paying it out to simply have a social life. Friendships became based on hosting a party and there was a constant pressure to be recruited by people I had considered close friends. I truly admired these incredible, intelligent women, so I just assumed they knew what they were doing. My own fear of trying to make anyone buy anything kept me from joining up. I felt like I was a failure. I just could not reconcile my moral upbringing with high pressure sales pitches, which I'm exactly the same way. I've always struggled with sales. It just makes me feel uncomfortable unless I just authentically believe in something. I don't want to just hammer away at people to buy something so I can relate. You know, I talk about mean girls a lot, but this also, it just feels like this social pressure to contribute to this MLM network. And it just makes me so sad because it's like, even the people who are actively participating in all of this, they're not gaining anything positive from it. It's not a positive aspect in one's life. And so it all just feels like a waste of social worries and stresses for no reason. The recruitment meetings I did attend were psychological masterpieces. You were convinced you were dumb if you did not jump at this amazing opportunity. 
There was one Mary Kay event where I was the only person that did not sign up. I did not sign up as the makeup made me break out. I really couldn't sell a product that I didn't use myself. And she provided this like whiteboard that just looks insane. It looks absolutely insane, just utterly stupid. And the caption says, I thought I was just too dumb to understand how MLM worked, which we know MLM companies make their structure purposefully confusing and vague so that you can't understand it, so that you just assume that you can climb up the ladder easily or, oh, it's just like, these few steps and then you rank up to this thing and then you get this prize which translates to this new rank and it, it just it's all confusing for a reason so that people never fully understand how much of a scheme it is when she talks about how she was the only one to sign up it's you can see how that would be such a social pressure you're feeling lonely and isolated this is the only community that really understands your experience and what you're going through and everyone is jumping into this and doing it so you feel like you're less than or you're isolated or you're singled out if you're not actively participating in this too. The breaking point came when the military spouses finally complained. They were beginning to notice that a lot of income was being spent buying MLM items. The constant parties were a real drain on the limited finances of junior officers. The senior officer spouses were most often not involved in MLM companies, but the change from friendship, support, and bonding to an MLM-based relationship among the spouses was a very dire thing indeed. The Navy base where we lived worked as a safety net for military families. Our husbands had no way to return home once they were out to sea. If a family member became ill or had a crisis, the crew member of the submarine was often not allowed to even know the family was in trouble. The crew members of the submarines relied on the other families to take care of any situation that might arise. While not officially members of the Navy, most Navy spouses took this role very seriously. We were especially aware of our role in watching out for those that our husbands outranked. As a young officer's spouses, it was our job to help out any enlisted wife. The captain's wife of the submarine on which my husband served had a very difficult unpaid job, making sure the families survived the deployments. My captain's wife saw that the we're all in this together had become you can't come to my movie night as I'm going to be selling Tupperware and you didn't purchase any last party, which is so frustrating. Imagine your husband's away. You need some support, a support system, a network of people who understand what you're going through. And you are told that you can't go to an event or a gathering because you didn't purchase someone's MLM product. It's so cruel. The constant, you will make more than your spouse. The, you will receive a pink Cadillac. The, you will retire rich from selling essential oils, but you have to recruit more members began to erode what the Navy family stood for, in the captain's wife's opinion. She lectured the spouses at a party at her house where nothing was sold. Now she had no real power, but the implication was clear. You had parties where everyone was invited from the crew. You checked on your fellow spouses. You offered to help them whenever possible. If you did not follow her suggestion, her husband might make a note of the behavior of the family in the next fitness report about the Navy officer. Sadly, the enlisted wives, while also selling MLM, seemed to keep a balance. It was the officers' wives, with their gung-ho and together lives, that were the ones that forgot they had an obligation to just be nice. I think, you know, the military has certain ranks, there's enlisted, there's officers, etc. And sometimes it has been known that certain military spouses will let that get to their head, that their husband has a specific ranking and therefore they feel like they have that specific ranking as well among the other military spouses. And that can be very dangerous when it comes to MLMs as well. I've kept in touch with many of the Navy wives over the years. None of them retired to some beautiful ranch in Montana with private planes and millions. Most of the families have done very well financially despite the loss of the MLM dream. These spouses were great salespeople and worked very hard, but the cards are stacked against you in an MLM company. A very small percentage make any money at all. Few, I imagine, become millionaires, and that is correct. Failure is treated as the fault of the person that joined the MLM. Hard work, though, is not enough. The reality is when you are selling an MLM item, 
and so is every other spouse. There is a limit to the market. Throw in everyone is trying to recruit each other and you have an endless cycle of everyone buying each other's goods. It's really not a lot of fun. When friendship is based on sales, everyone loses. On a military base where family support and friendship can meet the difference between a family collapsing or thriving, which is very true, MLM can become a danger to all. While I am sure MLM companies will claim they can help make friends, those friends are often pressuring you to buy or join. Those that opt out are left out. And that's a huge problem. I think one of the best points made in that article is that the military spouse community is a very small community. So when MLM spread, they eat up much of that community very fast. You can only recruit so many people until the entire military spouse community is filled up. And then you're competing with literally every single person in that community, you know, who's all selling the same thing. And there's no way to succeed in that. It's literally impossible. And the fact that a lot of these women go through intense, extreme hardships with their husbands being gone away with lack of communication for long periods of time, having to single parent, deal with family struggles on their own, and then they're dealing with this community that is not there to support them, that is instead trying to exploit them, exploit their pain and suffering for their own profit and gain and the MLMs that they're in is just so sad and disappointing and it needs to change. All fellow military spouses who are watching this, I encourage you to just talk about this more, whether it's sharing this video or just talking about this topic with military spouses. You know, I'm kind of an antisocial person, but I think a big thing that I can do is make more of an effort to talk to more military spouses and spread this message myself. I think that there's so much that can change within the systems within the military spouse community, within the network, within the support, so that we can prevent this from happening, so that we can prevent women from falling for this, for being cruel to each other, because it's just not necessary at this time. And that's really all I have to say on this topic. This is once again a topic really close to my heart as I can relate to so many of these issues and understand them. And I just hope that some positive change happens with all of this soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely give a thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, comment below what you think of maybe some ideas you have of how there can be more positive change within military spouse communities. If you are a military spouse yourself, I'd love to hear your stories with your interactions within MLMs and the experiences you've had in the comments down below. Let's have a great you know, discussion about all of this. And that's really all I have to say. Until next time, have a good one.